Okay, welcome, 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 yes, welcome to Neo Scavenger. You can see it right there, yes. Um, so I did record a video of this like an hour ago, and then I, you know, went to go edit it, and I realized, oh, the video was lagging behind the audio by like full 30 seconds. Like, it was not, it was not okay. But regardless, we're gonna try this again. We're gonna see if this video comes out decently. And so, you know, just know this, this isn't my first time playing through this. But, we are going to do basically the same thing I did last time. So we're going to get melee, we're going to get mechanic, we're going to get trapping, we're going to get lock picking, and we're going to get tough. Now, you see that we lose some points, and we have negative three. We can't not continue until those... So it's in the green basically so we need to add some debuffs i'm going to choose metabolism and my fully my, my phobia i don't know just um makes you make drink more food and water um you can't see as much you have to like look around for stuff you'll see how it affects the game you wake in a disoriented slumped over in the base in an empty cryo sleep pod still damp from cryo fluid the thick dust of the floor clings to your skin, leaving a deep clean spot on the ground where a large O5 is painted. Across the room, there is an open door to a hallway and a broken window leading outside. Just as you gather your wits, you want an unearthly screen erupts from down the hall beyond the doorway. Something is coming fast. Oh no! Okay. So, now we could rig the door to stay shut. Like a smart person, but uh, we're gonna fight it. We're gonna fucking beat the shit out of it. You in this, you instinctively drop to a defensive stand as it bursts into the room. The beast stands on its hind legs like a man, but it's appeared to be a, a ragged, predatory dog that looks right at you and shrieks with sound and freezes your blood. Despite your fear, you put a pretty good fight and you move on like you've done this before and avoid most of his lunges. You even manage to deliver a blow that sends the beast reeling in a haze taking advantage of this distraction you knock him to the ground and deliver a fatal blow with your knee <laughs> with the knee bro with the knee so wounded at least you're still alive how did i kill that thing with a fucking knee what, whatever whatever we, we chilling bro okay so now we have a dogman corpse i um my name is philip kindred Kindred from my hospital tag. I, I I wonder if I was gonna get turned into a dogman corpse. To be real, you're standing in the cryostasis room, though it looks like you might have been the only survivor. Yeah, it seems like it. Well, there's two people still. No, there's three people still in the cryopods. There's three of them still in there, and two of them are missing. You check the console for any patient info and you come across the records, emergency room. Okay, just basic information, billing info, S Chapel Street, Detroit, Detroit Savings Banks, South Broadway, Detroit. Okay, so we, we're in Detroit. <laughs> we're in Detroit. Oh no, you got sent to Detroit. All right, we're going to climb out the window. And also, if you look down here to the bottom left, you can see that. I have my chest scratched and my arm is pelted, so that's fun. And I'm also in pain over here. You decide to go outside and see if you can figure out where you are. Avoiding the broken glass, you step into the still outside, rustling some plants around that have grown wild in the area. The cool outside and damp, probably morning. The distant reporter, the distant report of a gun catches your attention. You cock your head, listening, but it's over as quickly as it started. Obviously, you're not alone here. Though that doesn't necessarily comfort you. You're, you're in the parking lot of Gedge's cryo facility, but everything looks dusted in despair. Worst of all, nothing looks familiar. You don't remember this place or even who you are. Your frustration mounts and you catch up to the check and you might as well take a look around. Okay, so this game is just about scavenging and surviving, basically, with, you know learning about the story and yada yada it's not a very action patch game it's a turn-based combat game 
It's basically just like a storage simulator, but cool thing about that is that with is that there's also like skills and stuff. So say with this trapping skills, I can prepare animals, right? I get a glass shard. I get the dog man. Confirm. I can get more fur. Oh. Do that. And well, bam. You got a dog man fur coat. And then with this fur coat, you can put it on him. And he'll stay warmer during the night. We're also going to take these glass shards for... Uh, purposes in both hands dual wooding glass shards and this is a lot of meat to leave behind but i can't carry it i can't carry it i have nowhere to carry it with so uh we'll go to these houses over here as you approach the town there is no sign of activity buildings stand in ruin vehicles are overturned with fire explosion marks ready outward from the walls and pavement in the distant strange looking creatures circle the sky like monstrous leathery vultures the world has distantly changed from what he once knew. Along with it, your hopes of finding a warm meal and some answers, you decide to look around and scavenge. Alright. So that's the main thing. You scavenge, basically. So now we have an abandoned shack, an abandoned home, and an abandoned mobile home. Two abandoned mobile homes and an abandoned home. And now we could use mechanic, but that also decreases your loot. But also increases your safety. So we're gonna go for the loot. Oh, a shirt. I'll take that. I think. Uh, oh my God. Well, that sucked ass. <laughs> we're gonna hide in a house and rest until. Okay, so you only have like four moves. I only have four moves. Oh, there's a stranger. Stranger danger. Um. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this bag, prioritize it for some string and the glass shards I have. Because we can go into the woods. Because not only will that help us hide from the dude who's coming, because in my experience, most NPCs want to fucking murder you instantly. Like, they don't, they don't give a shit what you are or whatever, they just want to murder you. Which is a uh, pretty, to say the least. But if we get the stick, we have our trapping skill. We have the string. We have the glass shards. I can make a sharpened spear. And with the sharpened spear, oh no! Wait, wait, wait! It's melee. Melee is what makes a yes. There we go. Broad spear. So I just took the glass and tied it up with a rope, and now I have a weapon. So, what I could do now is, um, I guess just abandon this ship right here. Cause now I got a, I got a spear, and with the spear, now we have a choice. We could stranger leader. I, I'm tempted. I have to fight everything. We're gonna fight it. Hey, where you at? Where you at, boy? Where you at? Let's try to talk to him. Hey, what's up, man? What's up? Oh, you're, you're charging at me? He's charging at me. Okay, well, I'll charge at you then. You can see what he does um, in this logo area right here. But I will commentate on what happens if you don't want to. Alright, I'm going to try to stab him with my spear. Okay, down here it says Bad Mota is bleeding. It's the enemy's name is Bad Mota. Mm, let's attack him again. And he's dead. Alright, that's actually one of the... What? Look at this dude. He's back with shit. My god, and some shoes, and some pants, and a shirt. Oh, oh, mama see, mama do. And a cell phone. Hmm. Okay, so we're actually going to get rid of this... Rid, rid of some of this meat. So we can carry a sleeping bag. Okay, we have a waves chip bag that we can unfold. So in this game, you can pretty much use anything as a container. Which is really nice. Because uh, you kind of need lots of space to do stuff. 
Okay, so that was our first kill. That surprisingly went really, really well. Oh, there's just another stranger. Do I dare? No, let's, uh... Locked. Well, I can't go in there. So it's locked, and I don't have any lock picks or anything. So we'll just leave. And try to murder this dude, too. Engage up close. Yeah, get, get real close. Sneak. Sneak towards him. Yeah, sneaky, sneaky. Oh, yeah, sneaky, sneaky. Here I come, sneaky, sneaky. I'm gonna get the drop on you, boy. I've never actually sneaked on someone before. This is kind of uh, interesting. How does he not hear me yet? Alright. And then, wha-bam! Player Broad Spirit has fallen apart. Player recently changed attack mode. Stranger Leader is bleeding. Okay. So our spear is gone. So now we have a sharpened spear as well. Um, we're going to stab him again on the ground. So stab him again. So then we're going to stab him again with the spear. Okay, he's still running away. So we're going to stab him again with the spear. He's still trying to run. He's rolling around. We're going to stab him with the spear. <laughs> okay. We're going to stab him again. And he's dead. Wow. I'm surprised that went. I'm getting... Oh, mama. Also, I think there's some... Um... I think you could do this. Hold on. I, I think you could cannibalize. Oh, no. You can cannibalize them. <laughs> now, we don't need the meat, so I'm not going to waste a turn cannibalizing the man. But we are going to wreck. Oh, God. Here comes someone with a gun. All right. This is our only chance. Go. Yes. Okay. Okay. We got. Okay. The spear has fallen apart. Spear is falling apart. The dude has a gun. He has a hunting rifle. We're going to tackle him. Hopefully we can get the gun out of his hand. Okay, no. Never mind. It didn't work. Um, he's charging at me, so let's just get up. And uh, da, 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 da. I guess we'll just try to punch him, I guess. I. Okay, he's bleeding. Man, is target surrendering? Fuck. No, I'm not surrendering. I'm gonna kill you. You're running away from me, you vagine. Come here. Come here. Ugh. I did it again. I punched him again. Get fucked. Alright. Okay, he's. I missed again. Let's try to... Okay, now that he's trying to threaten me, I'm gonna meal spurge him. Oh! Did I get him? Yeah, look at that! A gun! A motherfucking gun, baby. Alright, alright. It has no bullets. I wonder he didn't shoot me. Um, what I think I will do, though, is make a... So you can make more storage from a tarp and some string. Yeah, there we go. You can hold it in my other hand. Put the shit in from the chip bag here. Let's keep going. Wow, that's actually really good. Lucky for us. Unironically, like, I, I've never had that good of a start. <laughs> so that's uh, very interesting. So we can carry two waters at a time. Which is really nice. Also, it's not safe to drink water like I just did there. Without, like, boiling it or something. Because it could end up um being, making me very sick hmm. as you pick your way through the overgrown ruins a particular sound comes from a briefly audible it disappears and then picks up in a moment as if carried by air conductance currents it's a distant humming like small gas engines out of place in the silence of empty forests and abandoned buildings let's uh let's head over here to town Zoom, Zom Zoom's place to eat. Huh. I'm gonna be real. I've never been here before. <laughs> this is my first time seeing this. Uh, whiskey, huh? Whiskey. <laughs> $121 for some whiskey. Scrap of foil. I'm not sure what to use with that, but I'm, I'm taking it. Okay. 
So now that we got a bottle of whiskey, let's go check it out. As the source of the distant sounds, you finally come into view. You stop in your tracks, unsure whether it's safe to continue ahead. You see a tactic warehouse, one of those disturbing centers from before the apocalypse. There's a dull roar of ethanol generators combined with the occasional rev of unsuppressed exhaust from off-road vehicles. Figures are seen milling around low exhaust and low extension on the right. And the occasional ATV arrives or departs without fanfare. You don't think you've been spotted yet this far out, though the activity is hard to tell. Now, I am pretty well off right now. Recount. Recounter from. Peering in into the distance, you can see a bright sign saying Zom Zom's a place to eat. Hanging out over a giant garage door fenced off behind a trap barbed wire. Bright lights, welding arcs, and particular shadows could be seen in the fencing area and more lights within the warehouse. A semi trailer attachment to the one loading bays acts as the makeshift gate and a plead way into the warehouse. Rain, ragged looking figures line up alongside the trailer watch over by armed mercenaries. It looks like a club that anything else except for that trapped area. Then you see it, a truck on the other side, offloading prisoners of or slaves of some sort that doesn't bond, bode well. But then again, people come and go freely wherever else and they are entering voluntarily though do the plead way. Ah, as interesting as it would be to see what this is, there is many armed people and they have slaves. I'm leaving. I'm I'm leaving. Now it would be fun. Mm, 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 I got it. Mm, mm, uh, mm, I want the content. I want to know what's going on. I have to. While you're in line, you feel a flu of anxiety at reach the time a line advances. With each step, you try to catch a glance of what's through the doorway in a trailer, but you still can't tell. Most of the people in line are ragtag looking, wearing mismatched clothes and sinking, a stinking of sweat. Some confused, others bored. The guards are better groomed by comparison, though you suspect they are just soon murder you for your clothes if they were, <laughs> they weren't being paid. Up a few wooden plank steps, step inside a semi-trailer, hollow sounds of crowd echo down into a narrow corridor from the warehouse. To your right is a clipboard and a mesh booth where an attendant is collecting fees and weapons and stamping people before they walk down the trailer into the warehouse, stock or spectator, and the attendant drones looking distantly past you. Spectator? Huh? Stock. I'm not going to say huh. Well, uh, um... Um, I don't want to be the stock, but I also, I'll, I'll go with my gut and say spectator. What you got looking behind her, you see eye slabs, shoes, a sunny items. It looks like there are definitely some items to accept more than others, at least today. Um, you want some, I don't want to get rid of my cell phones. You want some whiskey? You offer them an item, and she stashes it in the metal locker. Hands, she demands to reach for a stamp as you present in your hand. She applies a symbol on her number, then nods to another grizzly merc who checks you out for weapons. He tosses your confronted items into a numbered bin and ushers you down the aw. Oh. Inside, there is one part super club, the part gladiator pit. A wall around his sounds assaults your ears as you cross the threshold. Part human cartography, part generator exhaust mostly frequently industrial music, and the smell of food and smoke. You can hear it over the noise, but you feel stomach rumbling to the smell of a sweet barbecue. The conifers warehouse is dominated by a dirt-floored area with high mesh walls, spectators rings, the pit of three sides, and the force reserved for a large garage door leading outside into the trap fence courtyard. Beyond the door, you catch the flash of welding arcs as it appears scrapyard robots are being prepped and along and opposed to garage door the thing you really care about right now a wide booth with grills spewing sweat and smoke and spicy smoke to the referees above rafters above sorry people clamoring to get at it and walk away with the prize smeared all over their hands and lips alike barbecue area people are fighting to eat people are fighting like slaves to eat some barbecue 
player ate Zom Zom's barbecue. Oh yeah. You wait through dirty Patreons intent with mercenaries, some ribs or beans and rice or whatever it is they, they've got cooking over there. Who knows how long they've been a cryo? Uh, how long is it since you've had a hot meal? Pressing your way through the final wall of hungry parchins, you get to a, an elbow on the corner and desperately try to make eye contact with one of the servers. A few external minutes later, one of the apron chad food slingers glances at you and nod an excited, like an excited dog. She reaches into the smoker box, withdraws a loaded skewer, and places it in your hand. Sweet, succulent barbecue. Hell yeah. Savoring it at first, you start to grow paranoid that it'll be snatched from your hands, and you bear down to watch it with a renewed fever, huddling with it against your lips as you obstinately walk away from the grill. This meat... It's like good, fully developed bell, not young, and yet not beef. Yes, very definitely like that, but not like any other meat you've tasted. In fact, so much that you think no person with a planet of ordinary normal sensitivity could distinguish it from veil as it's mild. Good meat with no other sharply defined or highly characteristic takes such as, for instance, goat, high game, or pork hive. Or pork have, sorry. The steak is slightly tougher than prime veil, a little stringy, but not too tough for stringy to be agreeably edible. The roast is tender and in color, texture, smell, as well as taste, strengthens your certainty that it will, that of all the meat, meats you've habitually know, veil is the one meat to which this meat is accurately comparable. That's a little weird, man. I don't know about that. That sounds like human meat. Sounds like I'm eating human beings. And we all know I could eat human beings. Okay. We all know I could do it. Just then, an announcer pipes up with some elastic voice announcing strip cup DJ seem to have. He starts to hyping the crowd. You can hear. Can you count, suckers? <laughs> he starts to shout to the patrons yelling back. I said, can you count, suckers? <laughs> On cue. The testosterone field wave shouts from the floor. Raise those numbers, he calls with expectation, and everybody raises their fists in unison. The music changes, lights switch to UV, and the numbers appears on all the stamps' hands. Your heart starts to race as you realize what's happening. Looking around, everyone has stamps most like yours, and they all have numbers, but it's clear now that what the symbols are, patrons like you have... Sh Shellolites? I I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it. Of vultures next to the their numbers. Those unlucky few have who don't have lambs. The announcer called his number a low number. Feeling somewhat relieved, you raise your hand above your head. Patriots around you look up for a moment, then continue scanning the crowd. A scream of protest erupts from the far side of the arena. Everybody nearby looks across where a common is staring a man is holstered into the air like a crowd server at a concert and being prepared to the arena gate. Patrons claw the reminder of his barbecue and from his falling hands. Fighting over it like dogs, guards wrangle the struggling man and toss him into the dirt floor in the arena and the gate is sealed behind him. The winner is a filthy, weak, and confused looking human. As he clamors to his feet, a clocking and squeaking sound coerces from the opposite side of the arena. Cheers start to erupt throughout the warehouse as the sounds of the noise rolls into the arena through the garage door. The bot has a little more than a heavy traded ring of barbed spikes. A hazard a half haphazardly hung LED sticker sits on the top of its mass, flickering the words Morning Star, confirming your suspicion as it's to its nature. <laughs> Dude, they're fighting robots. What? I love this. I did not know this game got this deep, bro. I love this. Without pausing, the bot starts to continue. Closing in on the human who is discredited what's given rattling and the gate is now facing more in intimate danger. He starts clinging left, leading to the bot to the side of the pit, then dashes as far, dashes right as fast as he can, bypassing the bot. The move buys him a few seconds. The bot spins in place and tread on its treads, but he ends up in the same situation on the reverse side of the arena. This continues for a few laps with a human. What's the human visibly wearing down? 
Perhaps realizing his error, he switches tactics and leads the robot towards a support column that allows him to get close before ducking around behind it. The bot starts turning in place, but the trident gets hooked on the pillar for a moment and appears to be stuck. You can sense a tingle of hope in the man as he watches the bot rock and for several, for several seconds. However, the bot rocking eventually frees it and it turns it to face him again. Chest fallen, the man returns to his original strategy of dodging the robot like a bullfighter, even more slowly with each pass. It doesn't take long for the robot to wear down, it's already weakened prey, and it stores, scores its first hits, impaling the legs and his under treads. Trampling his leg under treads. Oh, he got ran over. The man cries in pain, is lost in a wave of cheering from the crowd as the robot backs up. The man hardly has time to limp before he rams in again, and therefore following through and impaling him against the wall. <laughs> what? Drunken with bloodlust, the crowd is now screaming as the robot backs away once more from the stumbling, bleeding man. The bot rams into the wall one more time and backs away. This time, the human is stuck on its spikes. The crowd cries out in ecstasy as it eventually simmers down to a ramble as the arena service personnel remove the entrails. Your mouth agape. You suddenly feel a wave of nausea. You begin to look around, panic. Try to leave, see what happens next. Oh, we're seeing what happens next. Unsure what to do next, you look around the room anxiously, waiting for something that happens. Word is you've got a good medical plan, the voice startles you. And even amidst a shouting crowd, you can turn and find a young man with an old face. He looks to be of Asian descent, with hair like a mop, big aviator glasses, and an imparting white fur coat. <laughs> Relax, I don't work here. In fact, I'm going to try to make sure you don't either. Come on. He turns around and heads towards the garage door, since it's the same way from the arena's human-sized gate. You decide to follow. You get to the sense as he is a patron, too, or at least he's not with the management, as neither guard or patron seems to pay much attention. A little bird told me, he shouts over the crowd in music. You might know a thing or two about cryogenics. What? 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 How does he know that? Did he follow me? Was he the guy with the gunshot? What? I don't know. Uh, he talks over his shoulder as he walks as if tossing words your way. I know a guy who was looking for some heavy duty cooling goods. He may be willing to trade for some info on where we could score a few. You arrive at a massive garage door and cool air seems tingled with an L zone. His name is the Stout. The Stout. Come on, dude. I'll introduce you. Out in the robot prep yard, mechanics are tending to their creation. Your companion stops alongside a tall robot reminiscing of a farm combined. You shudder to think what it does to a human, these blades, but then something inside moves. Crawling out from the Fairner house behind the blades is a mechanic who looks around, satisfied, waves another waves out another out. The second looks more like one of the patrons than a mechanical starved and scared. The bear sulk along the fence line and disappear out of sight. Fur coat guy turns around back at you with a proud yet devious grin on his face. The stout is pleased to make your acquaintance. Now, about that medical plan, he suggestively taps his wrist. I didn't take my medical band off. That's why. Give him the bracelet. Just give him the info about the trade. Yeah, I'm trading, baby. Oh, a counter offered, Stout said, stroking with his chin. Hmm, hmm. Okay, tell you what. He snaps into action. I got a thing someplace that needs, uh, certain items liberated. He makes air quotes. You traded the bracelet. I'll let you in on the hall. Here's what's up. You want me to go steal from somebody? Here? At this place? No. Camp Grayling, you heard of it, right? Big old military base somewhere in Mackay? No? Guess you have no certain circles. Guess you have to be in certain circles. He flicks his... He flicks something invisible from his coat. All sorts of rumors about the place. The one that is sure is that it's full of tech and no one is... 
and no one to think or tinker with it. Meanwhile, he knocks a combined bot and producing a hollow ring. Sucks, right? Your part is simple. He places your hand on his shoulder. Maybe you've seen a bot around here. Tall, thin, f tin fellow? Six legs, mauling some guy? Yeah, that's the one. Well, wherever he came from, he's got to go. There's got to be more. And if I'm going... And if I'm doing this with the farm machinery, imagine what I could do with this old spidey maulers. <laughs> with the old spidey maulers. He promises he promotes an explosion while puffing up his cheeks. But Scott waves his fingers at nothing. I don't expect you to pilot these babies out of there. What I'll need you to do is get inside the base and bring back everything you can find them. Schematics, blueprints, test out it. The more the better. Be warned. It's a death machine nest. You think they're, you think these are brutal? Stoke gestures around the prep yard. Drunk, angry teenagers compared to the rest. Compared to trained assassins. In return, he says scratching a turn. I'm thinking the power structure will be shifting a bit around here. And there will be a new one of the... I, there'll be a new, oh, sorry, and the new one will be of the I owe you variety, he points at your chest. So, deal of a lifetime, dude. He wants me to go kill robots. Well, I've never really gotten this far in this game before, so, um, yeah, I'll take it. I'll take the deal. Nice, ha! <laughs> He extends a hand to meet with yours. Okay, like I said, the desk machine is, but I've got some goodies for that. Let's say an advantage payment or signing bonus. Either way, step one, he says, counting with his finger out. That bracelet still needs me some cryo goodness after all. Yeah, I'll give you the bracelet. It'll remind me when I passed. Unsure whether you want to give up the strap for yourself, consciously fidget with it at the moment and read it once more. Instead of you decide to share it with the facility address, but keep your name to yourself. Yep. Smart, he says, tapping the side of his head with his index finger. You are a smart dude. Tell you what. He starts unlatching his fighting case near as <laughs> the com combined bot and array of electronical parts and gadgets fill the case. Scanning his hand across the range of parts, he selects one. Then closes again. Here, he hands you some part of measuring device. It'll keep you healthy. Remember it when you get there. Black box when an antenna ICD readout. Okay. As for me, I may as well check your f fancy clinic soon. I think I'm coming down with a little something. He faked coughs and clears his throat, grinning. Step two, get inside the good spudish news and that, and that your new toy will help, but you'll likely need to supplement with tricks of your own. Nobody, Nobody's come back from there. The rumor is that some protesters managed to embarrass the brass of Grayling back in the day. You'd probably have to rummage through some old newspaper stories to verify that, though. I'll take that. Anyway. That's step two. Figure out how to get in. Step three. Find schematics somewhere convenient for the personnel to get to day and night. Step four. Test data. Download it off the controller tower using this. He hands you a small flash drive. Plug it. Plug and play. Easy. Set up. Step five. Bring it all to me. Got it? He looks over your shoulder. Oh, also, you probably want these back. You turn to you see your familiar face in the front gate. You drops your lockbox for checked items. You cast a glance back at the... Stoat and he shrugs. What? I can't do this alone? Your safest bet is to go alone. The fence is where they went. He thumbs over his shoulder, indicating the route with the mechanic and patron followed. Unless you're still hungry, he laughs, <laughs> mockingly in a vomiting motion. See you around, dude, he calls his shoulder, walking back to his warehouse. So he, he acted like he was throwing up when he talked about the food. I think it is human meat. I'm. I think it's human meat, like whatever meat you get from the Impaler show we saw. <laughs> Stoat's friend awaits you to gather your things from the lockbox. Better make sure you empty that locker while you still have the chance. 
Once ready, you headed along for the fence to return to the wastelands towards a higher measure of normality. Okay, got all my stuff back. Okay. Alright, so that was interesting. Um, let's check out the map. So, where are you? Camp Growling. Oh, that is super far. Okay, well, it's also super dark. Okay. Um... I think I'm going to end that there, though. Uh, I will come back to this eventually. I will come back to this. Now, the thing about this game is that it's a very slow burn, obviously. And I don't want this video to be super long, because I have to edit it down and everything. But, uh, you know, appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully that little story at the end was worth, you know, the wait. I think it's cool. I like this game a lot. Um... I, I will be back playing this again, and I will do another video on it, and hopefully we will try our best to get to the robot facility to see what is going on there, and you know, maybe I'll gear up enough so I don't die immediately, maybe I'll get there and I die immediately, maybe I won't even make it there, we'll see in the next episode. Anyways, thank you for watching, if you actually made it this far, which uh, <clears throat> I, I kind of doubt, I kind of doubt since I'm not very entertaining, but uh... Yeah, see you guys.